Oh, yes, I am a third world dictator. How are you? Nice to see you. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know how I always say this is my favorite car? This is my favorite car. This is a car I've lusted after since I was a kid. This is a Mercedes Benz 600. 1972 is the model year. I worked in a Mercedes Benz dealer when I was in college. The biggest thrill of my life was that we had to pick up one of these and either deliver it to a customer or deliver it two or three states away to somebody else. It's the most amazing road machine, certainly of the 60s and 70s, and certainly of all time. It's the only Mercedes Benz built without regard to cost. You know, most cars, they figure out how much it's going to cost, what do you put in, what do you take out. When this car was built, cost was no object. This was the most expensive car when it came out in 1963. It was about twenty-two to $25,000. Rolls Royces weren't even that much. It's an amazing road car. It is the largest car ever produced in Europe up to that point. Certainly the largest tires of any road car ever produced, certainly post-war. Not since the 540Ks and the 770s of the mid-30s, the custom coach built cars, have Mercedes-Benz built anything like this. It has a 6.3 V8. It is 300 horsepower. But this had a top speed of a little over 130 miles an hour. Uh, the car has no electrics. The windows, the seats, the sunroof, the trunk, everything is hydraulic. What that means is you have a pump that pumps hydraulic fluid at 300 pounds per square inch. It is the most complicated car to restore in the world. Uh, I did not restore this car. This car was restored by a gentleman named Carl Middelhoff. He is one of those older German genius guys. You know, there's a whole generation of guys that grew up in the 30s and 40s, be they American or German. In the same way you have these kids now that have just this innate sense of how to work computers, they were that way with mechanical things. And Carl was one of those guys. He is the recognized 600 expert, uh, certainly in America, if not the world. Uh, he has a little place up in Wisconsin where he restores these cars, and he did just a beautiful, beautiful job. When Carl dismantles the 600, he throws nothing away. Every piece of wood is saved and beautifully refinished. All parts are CAD plated. He even saves the original hose clamps, the rubber gaskets, the rubber hoses, the engine gaskets. In fact, he's not above resto modding. He even made a couple of El Camino style 600s. Everything to this car is bespoke for the most part. Each window switch is $11,500 because it has hydraulic lines with seals. Look how big it is. It's basically uh, like a C-Class Mercedes times two. Uh, it is the most comfortable, easy handling car. The car weighs a little over 5,000 pounds, 5,400 pounds maybe. Usually it's three tons when you have passengers and luggage and everything else in it. The biggest sunroof of any car I've ever seen. Beautiful hand laid wood. I mean the wood, that's all real wood. That's not, you know, any kind of veneer. It's solid wood all the way through. Uh, the car has a refrigerator in the uh, center console. You lift that up, that's a refrigerated compartment. And it comes with a thermos with uh, little shot glasses. The rear seat also reclines and moves also hydraulically, and because everything is hydraulic, you'll, you'll see it, the windows just go choo, 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 choo. Uh, It's just an amazing automobile, disc brakes all the way around. You have a big bladder in here, right up in here, which you have to empty every uh, once or twice a year to get the water out of the system. It's a combination of air and hydraulics. Uh, plus, this car has one secret that did not come w from the factory fuel injection, and just a big honking supercharger on here. <laughs> yeah, so this car puts out about 525 horsepower. Uh, the only thing I did to it was it was pinging a little bit on California gas, so we put a methanol water injection system, which is hooked up in the trunk. But other than that, this is all Carl's genius. He did a wonderful job on the car. This engine was Germany's answer to the 426 Hemi engine here in America. If you know anything about Mercedes-Benz, you know most of their cars, even their luxury cars, are all six-cylinder cars. And uh, Dr. Nylinger, I hope I'm saying his name right, developed this engine. Overhead cam, 6.3 liters, just a massive thing. And when this was put in the 6.3 sedan, the smaller version of this, 
it was the world's fastest four-door sedan. The inside thing is that uh, the company didn't really want to build it, so they went off and they built it secretly, and they put the engine in the small sedan. Then they had the bosses at Mercedes-Benz try it, and of course, you know the Germans, they love that power. Well, that thing just took off, and they said, yeah, I think it's one of the greatest Mercedes of all time. This is certainly one of their greatest engines, right up there with the Gullwing. Just a massive V8, and it was developed for this car, and then put into the smaller 6.3. And I've got one of those too, and we'll do a video on one of those later, but let's stick to this one right now. Uh, it was more than ample to, uh, to move this thing down the road. Incredibly complex engine, and not particularly efficient. Gas mileage is, well, well gas mileage is, uh, if you can get into double digits, hey, you're doing pretty good. Let's just say that. Just attention to detail, just a fascinating, fascinating automobile to drive. But let's show you some more of the salient points. Certainly one of the most beautiful interiors of any car. You know, this is one place where older cars really beat out modern cars because the quality of the leather and the wood, this is that real thick German leather that you just don't get anymore. As I mentioned, the doors and the windows rather in the door are hydraulic because electric motors in the early 60s, especially for automotive applications, were huge. They were, they were too big to drive a window this size. And if you put a big motor in here, then the armrest would have to be, they, it just restricted room. They wanted as much room for the, uh, for the passengers as possible. So they ran these extremely complex <laughs> hydraulic lines. And when one of those leaks, oh my God, oh my God, it's unbelievable. Oh my God, it's unbelievable one of these things leaks, how much trouble it is and how expensive it is to fix. So. That's the downside. The cigar lighter for each person because people smoked like chimneys back then. Even the, uh, even the rear seat, this also moves. The only noise you hear is the stretching of the leather. You have uh, central locking. When you lock this door, those all lock, which was a huge deal in the 60s. Now that's pretty much standard. You go beep and they all, but they didn't have that back there. You have curtains here for privacy. And then of course, my favorite part, the trunk opens hydraulically and you've got a massive trunk in here. California gas with horrible ethanol in it. Uh, just does not, does not have the octane rating for a vehicle like this. So we put methanol water injection and it cools the cylinder, cools the charge and uh, increases performance as well. Works amazingly well. And you can't close this by hand. If you shut this by hand, well, it's $12,000 for another hood latch. You just press this button here. Good day, Mr. Bond. One owner actually got his finger broken or cut off or something. I don't know if those old wives' tales, but that's what happened. There's the 600 emblem across the Mercedes star. Everything is oversized on this car. And as you can see, it says compressor, which means supercharger, of course, in German. And I believe this is the only 600 that has this. So it makes this car a lot faster than it already is. It was a pretty fast car before, now it's a really fast car. Every evil dictator in the world had one of these. Ceausescu, E.B. Armin, uh, Aristotle Onassis had one. John Lennon had one, which I thought was impressive. In fact, John Lennon's car was bought by a European gentleman, I'm not sure, maybe Dutch, and he sent it back to the factory, and to this day, I believe it was the most expensive European car ever restored in history because it just took so much. Uh, you know, the fun thing about this car, as I said, all the dictators had this, all of them. And I was driving this car once up the street here and I see a white haired man, about 75, 80. I believe he was Iranian. In fact, I know he was Iranian. And when they pulled up next to me, he went, ah! he goes, you scared the crap out of me. I shot the with the shawl. I thought you were a Savak agent tracking me down. Then he started laughing and he thought that was so funny. He thought I was a Savak agent for the Shaw driving around. As soon as he saw this car, it, he, he just scared him to death. So that, that this thing kind of instilled fear in people wherever it went. You know, I had to deliver one of these from Boston to Texas and I drove nonstop for like 22 hours, 23 hours to Texas. I mean, I pulled off the side of the road and would conk out for an hour or two and then get back on. And I delivered to the guy, and I would do it again tomorrow. It's just the greatest car ever to drive cross country because with the pneumatic suspension, it literally just, it just floats, but, it, but it's firm and it handles. I mean, it's a wonderful driving car. I, I say 
I think it drives as well as even a modern 600 or a Maybach or any of those cars. I mean, sure, it doesn't have Bluetooth and all the, the trick stuff and, you know, the air conditioning seats and all that, but as a driving instrument, oh, just, just fantastic. Come on, let's take it for a ride. The grace with which this car carries itself is just unbelievable. And the best horn. Or a boat horn for, a boat horn for a big boat. I mean, the fact that you can take a car like this out on a 104 degree day is a testament to the build quality. I mean, a temperature exactly 180 degrees. It's just amazing. You know, I'm glad we had to fix a few small things on this car because it gave me a chance to appreciate the craftsmanship and the workmanship on the car. We put a new master cylinder in it. I uh, did that the other day, which was not bad. I thought it would be crazy expensive, but it wasn't. That wasn't too bad. It's engine parts for the 6.3 are expensive by normal car parts standards, but not expensive by Mercedes 600 standards. You know, when these cars were built, you could get any option you wanted, a telephone. And of course, the telephone was a huge thing, size of a, <laughs> like a giant suitcase. And they had a TV screen, you could have a bar, you could have anything you wanted on these, any kind of upholstery. This is the short wheelbase version. I know this car seems enormously huge, but this is a short wheelbase since they made a stretch with, and they made a six door and a Landau with it. But Le Pope had one of those. You know, you can still find these relatively inexpensively because they just cost a fortune to rebuild. So you want to try and get the best one you can. That's what I did when I bought this one. I looked a lot of 600s, and then I figured, you know, it's better to spring for the extra to dough and get one that Carl had done, because, uh, as I said, he's the recognized expert. And you can see, it looks and drives and handles, oh my God, just like a brand new car. This was, I think, the best car in the world in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, the only place it might have gotten beaten was in maybe air conditioning and uh, that kind of thing, General Motors, Cadillac, they had the best air conditioning systems in the world, I think still do. Air conditioning was not a big priority in Germany for obvious reasons, so this unit is a bit old school. But everything else, brakes, four-wheel disc brakes when American cars were all just drums. And this big wide seat, you know, with its hydraulic controls, fantastic. But the place to really appreciate this car is from the inside. Come on, hop in, we'll take you for a ride. Uh, the inside of this car to me is just as beautiful as the outside. Start with a beautiful wood rim steering wheel here, all solid wood, just a beautiful piece. And this adjusts forwards and back. And this is all wood up here as well. I mean, just beautiful. I, I can't imagine how long it takes to shape that. And I'm sure it was done by hand, as it can only be done by hand. Uh, this is your air conditioning controls here. These are your two air conditioning vents, outside temperature, clock, uh, speedo, tachometer, usual gauges, water temperature, fuel, uh, oil, oil pressure, lights, hazard, uh, radio front and back. Uh, you have a switch here to control the ride, a little firmer if you want it. My favorite part is this here. You have a refrigerator right in here. You see, you can have the glass if you wish to entertain the women. You have the glass right here. Don't let the cops see that. Down here, you have, uh, this is for your electric antenna. And you see this green light here? When I, when I put my foot on the gas, uh, when you get the revs up, that will inject water, water, combination water and methanol into the cylinder. See that? There we go. There's your turbo boost right there. And your light comes on. And it shoots a shot of water into kind of cool the combustion chamber and keep it from detonating. And you've got all kinds of room. The fact that, look, I can't even punch the cameraman in the face. He is so far away from me. Look, I, I, you can't, it keeps you from fighting in the car. You can't, I can't even, I can't even punch. In the other car, I could punch him in the face. I can't now. This thing is meant for just crossing continents. Ugh, just get on the Autobahn and put your foot in it and go. I'm gonna have the cameraman hop in the back seat now. We'll really show you how big this thing is when, when you're sitting that far away. Probably one of the finest radios at the time, the Becker Grand Prix. But where this car really excels is on the open highway. This is different from the transmission, the normal 6.3, it's beefed up. 
And of course, the greatest sunroof in history. That's a sunroof. You can actually get the entire sun in that roof. You know, the guys in the 600 Club say, if you're not amazed every time you drive this car, there's something wrong with it. Or maybe there's something wrong with you. And I, I got to agree. Mao Zedong had 25 of these. So much for communism. As I said before, this was a car built. Money was no object. You know, the engineers are given the, uh, given the uh, orders to build the best car you can, regardless of cost. And that's what they did here. There's no logical reason why you would put a hydraulic system in running uh, all, the, all the comfort items like the sunroof and everything. There are a lot of big cars from this period that just have no room inside. This, they've managed to compact everything in a large car so you have a lot of room. This thing is like, a, like an SUV in here. You know, this W series of Mercedes, the 100s, the 109s, all that, this is my favorite era. Now, I don't know whether it's because I worked for Mercedes-Benz when I was a kid, and I really bonded with the brand because I got to drive them and work on them and understand them, and they seem so exotic. I never thought I'd be able to afford one of these cars. Uh, I like the new ones very much, of course, and of course they are better cars and safer and faster. But there's something about this era, this, the quality of this car. It's incredibly complex, yet in some ways it's incredibly simple, too. You know, when you see one that's done right, it's the greatest thing in the world. And when you see one of these that's done wrong or restored poorly, oh, it just looks awful. You know, they sit down on the suspension. And they usually have some cheap reupholstery job because it's expensive to do this, to find this kind of leather. A lot of times the refrigerator doesn't work. And believe me, you don't want a car where the refrigerator doesn't work. <laughs> now, this car had the longest run of any Mercedes that ran from 1963 to 1981. They built uh, 200, uh, 2,677 of these cars, 2,677 of these cars. In 1932, uh, 1972, rather, they built 138 that came to the United States. So they took a long time to build. They didn't build that many of them. These were sort of the last of the hand-built, coach-built Mercedes-Benz, much as the way the coach-built cars of the 30s were built. This represents that same uh, level of dedication and craftsmanship. Well, as you see, this car is about as different from the McLaren P1 as you can get. But as I said earlier, it doesn't make it any less enjoyable to drive. You know, this website's all about unique driving experiences. And to me, this is one of the greatest. You know, it's a, it's a mixture of nostalgia. I remember it when I was a kid. Plus, it's so technically amazing for its period. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful automobile. If you ever get a chance to ride in one of these, take it. Uh, so, uh... We'll see you guys next week.